Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Monday, September 4th. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Youngstown State game is in five days. The game against Michigan in 82 days. We are starting to settle into the rhythm of the season. And on Mondays, you're going to be hearing directly from the Ohio State players and coaches. Just kind of breaking down some of the things that we heard from them, learned from them after the previous Saturday's game. There was a lot to take away from Ohio State's win over Indiana, 23-3 over the Hoosiers in Bloomington. And, of course, what was the big, what was everyone's t- big talking point? What was everyone's big concern after the game? Well, we're going to start with the quarterbacks, of course. There, one of the big questions for Ryan Day was, you know, what was the plan going in with Devin Brown and Kyle McCord? And what was the deal with, with Devin Brown really not getting that many snaps during the course of the game? You know, I would have liked to have seen... Uh, Devin play a little bit more, but um, I just felt like um, you know we went three and out there, and then um, I want I was worried that we weren't going to be able to get into a rhythm. We already felt a little clunky early on, missed some short yardage situations, didn't convert on some third downs, and so um, I didn't want to run the risk of putting ourselves in a bad spot uh, by continually moving those guys in and out. Um, but going in, you know, really wanted to play Devin some more. Uh, would like to do that moving forward. But like I said from the beginning, we got to make sure we're doing what's right for the team, what's right for Ohio State. And I felt like that was the right call at the time. The Ohio State offense did not necessarily look like a typical Ryan Day offense during the course of the game on Saturday. And there are probably a whole bunch of different reasons for that, including the offensive line, including the fact that, hey, it's week one, including the fact that it's a new quarterback, all of those things and perhaps some more stuff. But when you went looked at the first half and then you looked at the second half, was Ryan Day maybe feeling a little bit better about his offense after the game than he did at halftime? Mixed bag, I guess, right now. Um, you know, I thought there were some good things, um, but we got to play better, better situational football. We got to finish in the red zone. We got to finish in short yardage, and we got to do a better job on third down. And if we can do that, then certainly, um, you know, we'll do better. You know, we need to run the football. Um, I thought there was times, you know, um, it was kind of by committee today. You know, those games seem to go fast. You know, they, they, they had 54 total plays. We had 67. But, um, man, it just it's, it seems to go fast. And, um, you know, I guess we ended up with about, uh, let's see, about 27 rushes and about 33 passes, um, which is decent balance right there. Chip ended up with about seven yards of carry. The other guys were just south of four yards of carry. Uh, we'd like to see all that, you know, north of five or six yards of carry. Then we're really cooking. So, um, you know, we're... We know what we need to do in order to win, um, you know, down the stretch, play great defense, run the football, and um, we'll continue to work to do that. But um, like I said on the radio, it's okay for me to be excited about great defense, you know, and I thought our defense played really well, and so I'm excited about that. I think what we talked about is it's a different looking defense. You know, we got some good length out there. We got our hands on some balls early. Um, you know, they took some shots early. I thought we were there, ready to make the play. Uh, defensive line was disruptive, so um, lots to grow on. You know, you got to get that first win, and um, anytime you're dealing with a new quarterback and some guys in new spots, conference game on the road, you know, um, it's good to get that one under your belt. One of the big stories of the off season was the fact that hey, Ryan Day is thinking about maybe giving up play calling duties to Brian Hartline. He was asked after the game about that and how that went. And he didn't really go directly into it, but I think if you read between the lines, you can kind of get the sense Ryan Day was more involved than you might have been led to believe by Brian Hartline's offensive coordinator title. So you're going to hear Ryan Day talking about that. And this is actually two different answers, kind of back to back right here, just kind of both related thoughts. You know, a lot of great feedback uh, from Brian, you know, b- between the series. We talk about it. Um, you know, there was a lot of dead. Um, like there was some injuries and so then we got these timeouts. It was a lot of times we were over by the sideline talking about each play. I felt like it was just kind of that way today for whatever reason. I don't know if that's because the clock's running and the TV timeouts happen, but it just seemed like we were over on the sideline a lot. But uh, during those times, we're constantly having conversation. Uh, Justin Fry is very much involved and the guys upstairs. Um, so, you know, it was a team effort, but, um, you know, and a good start. But as we as we start to get into some of the games in the next couple of weeks, you know, we'll start to uh, figure out how it's all going to work out moving forward. But um, like I said before, we got to do what's best to win. And, um, you know, Brian's doing a great job. He'd like to have more than 23 points. So wh- I don't know if that's the operation or what. I think that's part of uh, identifying week one, what's going on. Um, the number one goal was to get a win today. Didn't, didn't know exactly how it was going to play out. Glad we got the win, but now we got to get better. 
So this was Kyle McCord's second career start. Of course, he started the Akron game back in 2021. This one was a little different. So how did Ryan Day feel like Kyle McCord played after all 60 minutes were done? I thought in the third quarter, uh, during those couple drives, we got into a rhythm. He made some nice throws. Uh, made the nice throw to Marvin that, um, you know, the refs told me that he got pushed out of bounds or, or um, he, he put himself out of bounds. I'd like to see the film. Um, I thought that was a nice throw. But then we came right back and, and scored right after that, which is good. That's a good sign because uh, it can be deflating when you throw a touchdown. Then you got to come back and do it again. Uh, that was good. I thought the throw down the middle to, um, to Cade was a really nice throw. Uh, that was big. Um, you know, there was some plays certainly we want to have back. You know, I, I think we'll have to, again, look at the film and see. I think it was, it was a mixed bag overall. Got to see if it was a mixed bag to the positive or negative. You know, and that's, that's part of watching the film. Sometimes you think coming out of the game that something happened and uh, you didn't quite see it that way on the film. So we'll get on it, identify it, and move forward. One of the reasons the Buckeyes ended up with just 23 points on the day was they were just 2 of 12 on third downs. That is not going to get it done against better opposition than the Indiana Hoosiers. So does Ryan Day have any sense for why they struggled in those situations? Well, I know when you get off schedule and it's third and nine, third and ten, um, you know, the, the percentages there go way down. But we expect on third and three, third and two, third and one to convert about 80 percent of the time. When we're not, that puts us completely out of whack. And that happened today. And, and uh, that can't happen moving forward. There's been lots and lots of talk about how deep and talented the wide receiver unit is this year. But the running back room, boy, they are very deep and talented as well. Three different backs each got between seven and twelve carries on the day on the day on Saturday. So, is that going to kind of be the plan moving forward? Dividing carries up between those three guys that way. You know, Trey's the starter, and and, and Mayan's right there, and you can see what Chip can do. Um, but it's good to have multiple backs. It, it was hot today, especially in the first half, um, and so you know Tony Tony kind of rotated them, and and that was good. Um, you know. There was a couple drives there that, you know, we moved the ball down the field. I forget how many drives they were, and, and it was about time to, to, to go with a new back because of how long those drives were. Um, so, um, you know, I, it, it's, it's going to be a long season. They're all going to carry it. But, but Trey, um, you know, is, is the starter. Mine's right there, and Chip's right there as well. So, um, you know, I don't think Dallin uh, got a bunch of work today either. He's, you know, he's going to have to play, you know. We only have one football, but, but you know, all those guys are, are deserving. Everyone tends to forget this once you're a few weeks into the season, but the first game of the year always kind of looks a little bit like that. It's always a little uneven. That's true for Ohio State. That's true for other teams as well. But Ryan Day was asked, is there a reason for that? Is that a concern that it looks like that in week one? Again, and this is going to be two sort of related answers butted together back to back. Well, I think what, what you want to do in the first game, and, and that was part of one of our goals this year, is win the first game because it is kind of that way. Um, I think back on you know Justin's first start in the FAU game. That was a clunky game. I forget what the final was there. I think it was 20-something to three. Um, you know, the Notre Dame game was a top five game, so that was a little bit different. You know, you just, those games you're just trying to win. Um, the Minnesota game was, again, a conference road, a conference road game in a you know, really tough environment. Um, so, so when you look at those games, you, you just got to get the first win, and that's really what you, what you need to do. And then you identify it because there's just unknowns when you have uh, guys who are starting for the first time, and then you can kind of identify it and grow from there. So um, the goal is to win the first game. You know, you don't need to be playing your best football in the first game of the year, but you got to grow from it. And you got to make sure that wins uh, under your belt because you know in a few weeks nobody cares. You know, the wins a win, and then you move on. But uh, the goal is to get it, and then we got to grow. Yeah, that, that's the journey. That's the part I like, you know, going back now and figuring out, okay, wh where are we at? What did we anticipate? Um, what you can do is take a bunch of chances and, and be reckless and all of a sudden put yourself at risk of losing a game. Can't do that. Probably could have been a little bit more aggressive at times today, but the number one goal is to get the win and then move forward. Uh, there's going to have to be times we're going to have to be more aggressive for sure. Um, but. You know, I'm talking offense. I mean, I, I love the defense, though. So, I mean, I'm allowed to talk about the defense, so I want to smile. And I mean, if we play defense like this, we're going to have a chance. Um, certainly bigger challenges ahead, but um, I thought Tom did a nice job of, of replacing, um, you know, a good portion of his team and getting them game ready in the first game. You know, he did a nice job with that, and he's a very good coach, so uh, a lot of respect for them. I mean, this is a conference game on the road. We heard Ryan Day and his coaching staff talk a bunch during the course of the year about the fact that you never really know what you got until you have to you see a player doing it during the game. 
they can try and, you know, make things as close to game situation as they can during practice or scrimmages, but it's never a game until it's a game. So now that Kyle McCord got thrown into a game and had to deal with being the starter and dealing with all the pressure and sometimes not having success immediately, how did he feel Kyle McCord did with dealing with the adversity that came during the course of that game? I mean, some good things. Yeah, some good things in there. I mean, the, the pick was on fourth down, so it uh, didn't drop the way we'd like to. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to blame him for that. Um, you know, if it went back the other way, it would have been a disaster, but we got him on the ground. So um, that was a fourth down deal. Um, you know, he, he did make a play uh, with his feet on, on one of the play actions. I thought that was good. Um, you know, I, I know he wants to have a couple reads back, a couple things back, but. Um, you know, until you really watch the film, it's hard to evaluate exactly how the overall body of work was in the game. And um, I think that's kind of what I felt like, you know, when, when I was trying to figure out whether to get Devin or not, in there or not. You know, when you get those first couple um, drives under your belt, you kind of get into the rhythm of the game. And I didn't want to have Devin go through that as well. And then all of a sudden we're in the, the second half and we're in a dogfight. Neither of them are in a rhythm. So that's that was my gut. And, and I went with it. If you were watching the game, I'm sure you probably noticed the offensive line was probably not at peak form just yet. There's three new starters, including a transfer and a redshirt freshman. That's not a huge surprise. But how did Ryan Day think it went for the offensive line? I, I know where we need to be. We're not there yet, for sure. Um, but got to look at the film and, and see and identify it. You know, I, I usually, if I say something right now, it's usually not accurate because, um, you know, you have a couple plays in mind that certainly you want to have back, but sometimes there's different reasons for that. Um, and, you know, I, I'll give, um, you know, Matt and, and Tom a lot of credit. You know, they, they, you know, changed up some things in terms of what they were doing. And so when you, when you rep over and over certain things and they change it up a little bit, you know, that, that can get you off. And, our, um, you know, some of those guys don't have a ton of experience to fall back on. And um, so we'll, we'll figure out how they all grade it out. But um, I know in order to win championships, we're going to have to get better. All right. Now we're going to turn our, turn our focus to some of the players we got a chance to talk to after the game. Let's start with Travion Henderson. He was one of three running backs that got a whole bunch of carries. He had the most carries. He did not have the most yards. That would have been Chip Trainum. But where does Travion Henderson feel like the running game is right now? And how did he feel like Saturday went? I feel like it's all right, man. It's, it's, it's all right, man. It was definitely uh, some, some mistakes were made, and, you know, just as an offense collectively. So, man, it's just I feel like once we get it together, as long as we, as long as we just keep working, man, keep practicing, keep practicing hard and stacking days. I feel like it'll all come together. Just first game, man. So it, we knew it wasn't going to be perfect, man. We knew we were going to make mistakes, but it's first game, man. We're definitely going to clean it up, though. We've been very offense heavy during the course of the show, so I recognize that and want to address the defensive side of the ball as well. We're going to do that with JT Tui Molowau, the defensive end. This was, you know, the day was kind of a mixed bag for the offense, but the defense was just really solid all day long. Held Indiana to just 2.2 yards per rush, a little under four yards per pass attempt, and only three points. So how big was it that the defense picked it up when the offense was struggling a little bit? You know, we're a family here. Uh, you know, brotherhood is the main thing. You know, we got each other's back no matter what happens, no matter how bumpy the road is. Uh, we got each other's back. And, you know, for us to hold down uh, hold down our four just uh, and just continue to make uh, turnovers, giving the offense chances, you know, that's all we can do. You know, trusting our offense and, you know, we all got to clean up little things and, and have a better game next time. There is some new personnel on the defensive side of the ball, and this is the second year for Jim, Jim Knowles as the defensive coordinator, so they're working in some new stuff there. But overall, just what's different about the defense this year compared to last? Swarm, mm -hmm. energy, and just playing off one another. Uh, you know, just just over communicating. I think we we improved in a lot of the small areas um, and just kept all the things that we did well. But you know, I think I think that was one thing we improved. On. I was playing with great energy, playing with each other, and, and just swarming to the ball all eleven. And finally, you're going to hear a little bit from Kyle McCord now after his second career start, first as the true starter. He just he he looked a little more comfortable out there in the second half. The whole offense looked a little more comfortable in the second half, but Kyle McCord, perhaps in particular, so. Did he feel a little more comfortable in the second half? You kind of get into the flow of the game, um, and you know, 
know, I think just as an offense, I think we played a lot better uh, in the second half. You know, we ran the ball better, we passed the ball better, uh, moved the ball better as a result. So I think, you know, just how can we continue that, um, you know, get it to the next level, you know, and just keep, you know, improving and putting more points on the board. We've mentioned that first career start for Kyle McCord against Akron back in 2021. So he's done this before, but on, let's be honest, it was kind of a different situation. He was just kind of filling in for C.J. Stroud as Stroud took one week off to kind of rest up his shoulder. So did this feel different for Kyle McCord compared to that first start against Akron? Yeah, I think more control uh, for sure, uh, better understanding, just obviously being in the system for you know, going my third year now, understanding you know what defense we're trying to do and what we're trying to do on offense and just having a deeper understanding for them. As you have probably heard someone mention once or twice, Kyle McCord and Marvin Harrison were teammates in high school. So those two guys know each other pretty well. But in McCord's first start this year, Harrison only had two catches for 18 yards. That is certainly not what you probably went into the week expecting from Marvin Harrison. So what was Indiana doing to take him away? And how does Kyle McCord and the rest of the Ohio State offense have to deal with that? I um, mean, he's the best receiver in college football, so I mean, a lot of the times it's going to be rare if you get one-on-one -on -one with him. And, if, you know, if they do leave him one-on-one, -on -one, you have to make them pay, but it's not surprising when they put a safety over top, the double or whatever the case may be. But I think, you know, having him on the field and when they do that, it opens up other guys, uh, which, you know, maybe a few times a day we capitalize on that. Well, that will do it for today. We are getting settled back into the game week routine, as I mentioned earlier. So we'll try and have a show with Ross Fulton this week, maybe two as we sort of look at all the different stuff that there is to break down on the offensive and defensive sides of the ball. Could be a lot to talk about there. We'll have uh, interviews with Ohio State players and coaches coming up this week as well. Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday evening, a little Thursday lightning round with Ryan Day, and then kickoff on Saturday against Youngstown State at noon in Ohio Stadium, the home opener for the 2023 Ohio State football season. So that should be a, a very fun week and a very uh, eventful week here in Columbus. I'm sure there will be a lot of stuff to talk about. So hope you guys are talking about it at BuckeyeHuddle.com, where our team of insiders is covering the team and recruiting and X's and O's and much, much more, plus a really fun community. Uh, lots of stuff to talk about there. So sign up today, become a member there, and also make sure you are following us on YouTube, youtube.com slash BuckeyeHuddle. Make sure you're subscribed and hit that bell so you get notified when we post something new. Make sure you're on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash BuckeyeHuddle. All the places, all of our podcasts, you can find those. Wherever you like, wherever you find podcasts, you can find ours. Just search Buckeye Huddle. You can subscribe right there. And also, we would appreciate it if you'd leave us a five-star rating and review, which will help other folks find those shows as well. That will do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.